Okay, it appears that you clicked on the link for the video overview of the Math 120 guide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the Math 120 guide. And it's going to open up a Dropbox. If you're not a member of Dropbox, though, and it asks you to join, you can simply say, no, thank you. And you'll still be given access to the document. What are you going to do now? Click the Download button. When you click the Download button, if you're computer is properly configured, it's going to download the PDF file and open it up on your computer. All right, so this is the Math 120 guidebook. All right, so what I want to do is I want to just, you know, briefly go through one of the sections, but every section pretty much looks the same. It's the content that's different. So for example, let's say I went to the graphs of trigonometric functions, and I'm going to click on this and just go through this. What does it give you? Well, this is the second section of the, um, of the material. It says that they should be able to complete the web assigned Math 120 Topic 2 when they're done with Section 2 of this guide. All right. The other thing it mentions is a weekly discussion group. Now, that could be done in classroom or it could be done online, whatever you feel comfortable doing, by the way. So let me just go through the structure of it. The structure is pretty you know, carefully done, by the way. You know, they, they typically, there's going to be some lecture material to cover. Now, what I, what I do provide, and again, these documents should be shared with do, students if you're going to use them, I, I actually provide, you know, images for students to look at. And I also provide next to the image over here a little tiny video of me talking about this image, all right? So it's important that students understand the images that are given to them and how it relates to what's going to be expected in the questions. So, you know, I, I go through sine function, I go through cosine function, again, little tiny videos over there, and these are good pictures, by the way, you know, properly scaled. I go through the tan function, again, a little video over there. Again, it's a good picture, much better than you could do at the board, by the way. Uh, cotangent function with a little tiny video. Let me put on what I mean by a video. A video would be, if you click on this thing over here, a web browser is going to open up, and what are you going to get? You're going to get a video, and by the way, it's a video that's three minutes and 21 seconds long, of me talking through that image. Now, what can you do with this video? You can change the volume of it. You can change the speed of it. Um, you can make it full screen if you want. Whatever's working for you, by the way. I mean that you or the students, whatever's works for you. Now, I'm not going to play the video for you, but again, a student may find it helpful, but if they're not finding it helpful, don't play those videos. I really do mean that. This is something that students, if they do find helpful, should be doing outside the classroom uh, environment, like when they're home studying the material. All right, let me go back to the PDF. And again, there's little videos next to all the questions. And it's me basically talking about this image. All right, and then what do I do? You know, I, I, I talk about calculator usage. I talk about graphing, uh, how to graph. I talk about conventions. Again, if you look on the side, there's little tiny videos of me walking students through these topics over here. Who's that really designed for? Students that have a tough time with the reading. If they're reading this time, they don't know what's being said. You know what? Audio visual. That's what this is over here. Audio visual. Right. Is it helpful? Yeah, it is helpful for some students, but not everyone. Some students don't need that. But your goal is in the lecture is to cover the material that's being presented. I got to be honest with you, keep it short though. If you're yammering on for days about this material, it's going to fall on deaf ears after about 15 minutes. Your lecture should go maybe 15, 20 minutes in this section over here. And then what you do is you go towards uh, the examples. Now what I do in the examples, next to the example, again, a little tiny video of me working the example. In the blue area, I'm going to put down some information over here. Like for example, I'll put down five characteristic points. And I'll put the image down. Now, you notice the image over here. It's linkable. You can click on that go directly to the image, uh, image. But this says figure 11 on page 42. Let me go to that. Figure 11 on page 42. It's this image over here. All right. Now, I would encourage students to use these images to help them learn how to graph. That's what I would encourage, to use these images to help them learn. It's like a picture book, so to speak. All right. So there's... A bunch of material down over here, me going through this, and as soon as I was wondering, when do I get a chance to try? Well, they do need to try. And trying these things, I want to point out, let me scroll through the problems that are done in class, there would be homework problems. Now, when I say homework problems, homework is something that's done outside the classroom. 
So when you're doing the homework problems, the students doing homework problems, they're given problems that are very similar to what you did in lecture during the examples. I also put down, you know, um, you know, the period and amplitude for this over here, and I put a sample picture down. And what does it say? You need to label five points on one cycle. Now, granted, I, 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 I give nice images because I want students to use those images over here. Now, if a student clicks in this video over here, it's basically going to be me warning the student, if you can't do that problem, you need to go back and study the examples that have been given to you and then come back and do this. Right? It'll be warnings to me about telling them they have to go back and study. What a lot of students do is they try to shortchange their educations by doing what they're told, which is homework, but not understanding any of the material. And they're in an infinite hamster cage, and we need to get them out of that hamster cage. All right, so I want to claim that there's you know homework questions, work through those things. I also, uh, again, if it's overwhelming, please don't look at this, but I also introduced what's known as a computer algebra system, and this is what's known as sage math. Um, you know, I, I publish videos on it, and you know, again, if you're comfortable with that, that's great. I, I would say that students need to get comfortable with a computer algebra system. Okay, let's get to the very end of the document. Every section is going to look the same. What do I have? I have little videos down for students to watch. Now, do students need to watch these things? No, they don't need to watch these things. But maybe they do. You know what? Maybe the lecture didn't work for them. Maybe they got to go home and play this, right? So, for example, let's say I want to, you know, play this lecture over here. And so I don't even know what that lecture is. It's about reference triangles or reference angles, right? What's this one over here? Lecture material, examples. You see the EX. Homework, all right? Let's say they need help with the homework. Well, let's, let's click on that. And let me tell you how this works. A YouTube video will open up. Again, I want to go through YouTube. You can, you can adjust the volume. Uh, you can, you know, close caption if you want to make a closed caption. That means subtitles. Uh, playback speed, you can change the speed of, the, of it. You can change the quality. Now, someone says, why would I want to change the quality? A lot of times, if you have a slow internet connection, you got to slow down the quality of it. For example, 144p takes length bandwidth than 720p. But if you have a high-quality uh, internet connection, play the highest quality video that is available. Some of my videos go up to 1440p, by the way, all right? So um, what's nice about this over here is that you can scrub the video, right? You see what I'm doing with that little thing? I'm just taking this thing and scrubbing it. And let's say, you, you know, you wanted to, you know, had, you had a problem or something and you were looking for the problem. Let me just see if I can scrub that. And let's say you had a problem with problem number one. Let me just play that, see what happens. And let's see, I'll do pi, right? And right down. Let me scroll. You see what I'm doing? I'm just scrubbing the video, right? So five over two. Yeah, so what I want to do four. is I just want to draw in someone. the aspect. I'm sorry about that. I'm talking over myself. Sometimes students use this way. They don't want to look at the whole thing. They just want to watch part of it. Let them decide. I really mean that. Let them decide how they're going to use that. The objective here is to learn material. All right, let me go back to the PDF document. And again, every section, and I really do mean that, is going to pretty much look the same. Whoops, I got to get back. I'm sorry about that. I got to get back to my PDF over here. So let me uh, scroll up and let me go back to the table of contents. And I don't know, it, 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 an example, I mean, they're kind of labeled triangles, vectors, polar coordinates, Cartesian, trigonometric point complex numbers, parabolas. Let's click on this over here. Again, I want to point out every section looks the same. They would tell you to do a web assign. They would tell you weekly discussion groups. There'd be little videos on the side for students that need to watch those videos or faculty that need to watch those videos. There'd be a little lecture over here, basically with little tiny videos next to each thing. For example, this video over here is just a mini lecture about the modulus. This little uh, video over here is just a mini lecture about the trigonometric form or the polar form of the complex number, yada, 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 yada. Uh, Dumas theorem, little tiny mini lecture over there. Again, for students who need that, talk about roots, yada, yada, yada. This is done during lecture time, by the way. There's examples in lectures. And then what do you do? You need to reinforce the lecture material. Again, lectures at Essex County College tend to be quite short. We don't cover much material. What we do is we spend much more time on giving students examples. All right. So over here, I'd go through examples. And the examples pertain to the lectures. 
All right, and I, I work through all those examples at the board, whether it's done virtually or in class. I, I do the examples at the board. We talk through them. Right now, some of these are difficult, but the bottom line: students have to try it on their own. Right, and that's a weak link for a lot of students. They don't think they need to try. They just think you're going to wing it on the exam, and they realize I can't wing it on the exam. They say, "Well, maybe next time." It, it doesn't work out well, by the way. You got to get busy. You got to tell your students to get busy before you get the exams. But what I do is I allow students uh, a chance to try these at home. All right. Now, some students are going to click on these videos over here, and again, I want to repeat this. These videos are best going to say, if you don't understand the question, you got to go back and study the lecture material. But you see the structure, right? Homework, homework. Then what happens? I bet there's going to be sage material too, right? And what do I see? Sage. Yeah. If it's overwhelming, you don't look at it. Then online videos, yada, yada, yada. All right? And that's the Math 120 material. Thank you so much for paying attention.